All right, so now I'm going to talk about the game known as the Black Cauldron. This was a game developed by Sierra, obviously on this channel. Alo was uh, most responsible for it. Um, I believe they were contracted by Disney uh, to promote the Black Cauldron animated movie, the original one that Disney had released, which, by the way, did so poorly that it is often referenced to the animated movie that almost destroyed Disney animation. That's how poorly it did, compared to how much they put into animating it versus how much they got back in terms of the movie. But not going to talk about the movie much more than that. One thing I'll talk about in this game is there is no typing in this game, nor is there any. Um, like later on, Sierra did the thing where everything was like clickable, so you had a mouse and stuff like that. This game is neither of those. There's literally no typing. Everything is done with the function keys. So F3 will select an item in your inventory. You hit F3 and it pops up your inventory and you can arrow it down to what you need. F4 will use that item. You would think F5 is something that you could use also, but no, F5 is actually the function. F6 is to do something like to talk to someone, to open a door, something like that. And then F8, not F7, because F7 is restore. F8 is to basically look around the scene. So that's a little jarring in the fact that the function keys are not in order. Like, why didn't they just do it F1, F2, F3, F4? You know, something that's just right there. All the keys are lined up. I get that traditionally, like F2 is to turn on and off the sound in most Sierra games, but you would think they would have made an exception uh, in terms of how they arrange this game. So knowing that, I also have a keyboard where my quote unquote function keys are also the keys to mute, um, increase volume, you know, hit play or reverse, whatever, turn up the brightness, turn off the brightness. So if I hit those keys without a function key, it'll actually like mute sound and stuff like that. So I literally have to press a function key. I don't actually have like F1, F2, F3 at the top. So it was a little more jarring because of that. So not only are the keys not like in a very simplistic order, they're kind of spread out. Uh, you'll see a number of times where I'm trying to press F4 or F6 and you'll see the save menu pop up. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm actually trying to either uh, use an item or I'm trying to like open a door. I was thinking they probably did this because the game was aimed towards children, right? So, you know, you basically just say, hey, you just press these function keys. You don't have to worry about typing anything and spelling it wrong and the game not understanding what you're trying to do. You just have to press these function keys and it'll tell you yes or no if you can do something in that area. <laughs> that was my thinking. And then as I played the Black Cauldron, keep in mind, I used to have, hmm, go into backstory here, I used to have the Black Cauldron way back in the day. Like I had the box set, I bought it when it first came out. I don't even think I realized when I first bought it that it was related to Sierra at the time. I think I just bought it because it was the Black Cauldron and I was back when I was much younger. I was obsessed with those types of Disney movies like the Aristocats and 101 Dalmatians. Um, when I, anyway, so, something happened to my game. At some point, I lost the game. I have no idea at what point in my life I lost it, but somewhere I lost the game. So it's always been a game that I've been trying to refind again to repurchase, um, but I never have. Thankfully, Allo offers the game for free since he programmed it. If you go to allo.com, uh, you can get the game for free uh, on his page. Now, going back to what I was saying, thinking that the function keys were to make it easier for the kids. Well, there's things like this, this little force made you, if, if you're paying attention to what I was doing versus what I was saying, you'll see I kind of walked through it and I ended up by the river. And then the, the Horn King's minion thing flew by and took Henwin. So I knew that was wrong. So we're supposed to get Henwin to the fairy folk, so if uh, the Horn King's people take it, I've already done something wrong. So you have to go through that little forest maze in the correct order. You have to make the right, you know, there isn't like a hundred different options that you can choose from. But it's very easy if this game is indeed targeted for a younger audience to think that if they took the wrong way and they just ended up by the river, that it looks like a normal screen that, you know, you just walk through these hedges and you end up uh, on the other side where there's a river. 
this isn't the only time that this happens. So this will happen later where you have to go through a rock maze to get through. And if this game is indeed targeted towards younger children back in the day to help promote the Disney movie, Sierra did a number of things to make this game a little more frustrating than I would think for children. Um, so anyway, um, after a few tries, it did, I think it took two tries, I did get through and I found where the fairy folk are and they take Henwin. Henwin is safe, so we're good here so far. And I will say that overall in this game, it is fairly difficult to die in the game. There's a few spots, like there is an area that's um, a river where it says, you know, the rapids are very, very strong here. And you can get swept away and basically die. You drown. So, <laughs> so that's one of the areas. But there's also a different area, or it's that same area where I went to get water. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. See, I never write anything down. I just do it as I do it. Um, this game requires for you to have food and water. This is like the only Sierra game that I can think of where it does things like just walking through <laughs> through the uh, forest that it'll say you're hungry or you're thirsty. Um, I know there's other games in Sierra where you're walking through the desert and you might have to drink water or find a watering hole. Um, but this one you just need it as you're wandering around, so you constantly have to refill your water flask and eat food. And the food thing, I happened to find something a little bit later that was not what I thought it was. I'll talk about that when I get to that. Um, but the water, you just have to keep filling up your water flask, which is not too difficult because there is plenty of water. Now, this thing with Gurgi. So I've selected the apple and I'm trying to give it to him. Uh, there was a number of times where he walked away or runs away because he's moving like he's moving much quicker now because the game's actually sped up. But he moves nonstop. So <laughs> there's that time I tried to give him the apple and instead of giving it to him, um, Taryn ended up eating the apple. And that's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to give him the apple to see if that befriends him because he's asking for like some kind of meal. So that said... In that way, if this had been a typing game, you could say, give Apple to Gurgi, and it might say, hey, he's too far away, or something like that. But no. <laughs> so here, that looked like a path. This is why I finally figured out that you have to use the magic word here. And you fall into this cave, and there are more fairy folk here. And this is where you get some flying dust from them um, after you talk to them. And the flying dust will be used later to deal with um, some witches. So, but this, yeah, uh, as I was saying, this game has a number of different uh, pitfalls. And what I was saying earlier, it is fairly difficult to die in this game. Like I said, there's a few spots like the river and stuff like that. But once you, <laughs> once you get in the castle and you're kind of stuck in the castle, if you do not... They, um, in the castle, if they capture you, they'll throw you into a prison and they take your stuff. And they have a cup there, so you can bang the cup, and you'll see it because I get caught a number of times. Um, you can bang the cup, and then someone opens up the floor, and they show you this hidden area. Now it's supposed to be hidden. This girl's been hiding there for a while. You see when we get there. And what's funny is, near the end of the game, uh, while I was wandering around the castle, I found the Horn King's throne room, if you will. And I thought, this is where I'm going to confront him. Like, it will be in his throne room. No, it's actually in this hidden passage that this girl's been hiding in all this time. So how really hidden is it if he is actually using it to do his cauldron thing? So when I encountered the Horn King at the end, it was literally by accident. Like, I kept trying to get up to his throne room and trying to time it. Because there's a time where he walks in there, but his little assistant walks in with him. And so I was thinking, I have to time this right. Like, do I have to jump on him? And then I tried to jump on his assistant. So it is sheer chaos uh, in terms of this game. And it's not, if it's geared for younger children, or even an old man like myself at this age, it was difficult to figure out where to go and what to do. So here is where... Um, so when it talks about the bridge, what I, <laughs> what's funny is... I go back to look at the bridge 
because it made that little note that remarks the uh, it's the border. And so I was wondering if there was something to the bridge, because normally you just cross a bridge and it doesn't really say anything. But you'll see I'll go back to that bridge eventually, and I'm standing next to it. I'm like in the water, which is weird, because why would you go in the water if there's a bridge? And if you look, there's a, I think it's right here. See, it says your feet are wet from the stream. So in order to get this item, it says there's a wallet beneath the bridge. Now, when I think of a wallet, I am thinking a wallet that holds money. So, you know, your good old fashioned like leather wallet or something like that, or maybe like a pouch, like a small pouch type wallet. Well, whatever this wallet is, it says it has magical food that it will just keep replenishing itself. And here's where it talks about your thirst is intense. So you have to drink the water. And you have to, I didn't know this until later, because you'll see that I drink water several times and I never think about refilling it. So when I'm in the castle, there's a point where I'm wandering around and I can't drink water because they've taken my stuff and I can't find my stuff. And I eventually just die of dehydration. I think there's even a time I die of starvation. So I kept restoring every time I got caught. Um, and I think now, in hindsight, I think I know where the items are. You have to go upstairs, and there's what appears to be a small closet. And it's right next to where, <laughs> and I can never figure out what this dude is for. There's what appears to be like a chef who's like swinging around a kitchen like knife. Um, he doesn't attack you, doesn't do anything as far as I can tell, but he's just swinging this kitchen knife in the kitchen. Um, but next to that kitchen is this, it looks like a closet. It's just a small door that you can just kind of open and you can't really go into. It doesn't lead into another room. So I assume that's where they probably take your stuff. Now, if anyone knows what the chef is for in the castle, like is there something to do there? I could never stay long enough because the goon would always show up. And if the goon captures you, he takes you and throws you in the dungeon, which I was trying to avoid. And there's where it's saying you're starting to feel hungry. So I never figured out if there was anything specific to that um, to that chef. So these trees, when I put sus trees, I was fully expecting, I think it's in King's Quest IV, there are trees that are uh, similar style as this, where they look like all creepy and alive. Uh, they can kill you, if I remember correctly. So when I saw these trees, I was like, oh, wait, these trees are sus. <laughs> so, but it turns out these trees don't do nothing. They just look extremely scary and horrified. I did like that the game did have some screens that, like this one, they are just there to add extra scenery. And they lead up to this area, which is the rock maze that I was talking about. But you can't, the way this game is designed and the coloring and the way they hide where you can move is a little jaunting. But you, where that, where we just were is the rock maze, but you have to get at it from a different side to be on the right side of the rock maze. So, um, but I do like some of these extra scenes where you're supposed to come at this is the river where I drowned at last time and also where I lost my water flask um, where you come at it from a different scene so now you can see we're over to the right and you can't actually walk to the left from here so this is where the maze is at so you can't really see yourself at times you have to just assume you're going in the right direction and it'll, you know it'll stop you from moving at certain points but you know it's not it's not clear with how it's designed um, which way you should go. And so now we're here. And at the time I th couldn't figure out what to do. So I just thought maybe there's a tree like above and we just climb up. Because I've not played this game since probably I originally had it. So we're talking well over 30 years, probably, <laughs> since I've played this game. And uh, I can see why. The function keys were jaunting to me uh, to get used to. And also the fact that, like on here, you literally have to move diagonal. Uh, so n it's the first game I can think of in Sierra where you have to move diagonal. You can't do like, 
you know, forward, up, forward, up, forward, up, forward, up, forward, up, you'll just fall. So this game was, uh, it was very different. Um, <laughs> and to, you're going to see it here in a moment where I come over here and it looks like I can just walk. It looks like it's against the wall, but it's not. There's actually a hole there. So there's weird things like that where it looks like it's leaned up against the wall because the path right there looks just like the one above it. Um, but it's not. There's like a gaping hole right there. So death was waiting for you at every corner in this game. Like I said, it's it's not so much that anything is there to kill you. It's just drowning, falling. <laughs> These are there to kill you uh, nonstop. And you'll notice, take note that I am on the right side uh, between these two rocks. Because what's going to happen is eventually, I, when I'm wandering around this castle, going in circles, trying to find out what to do, I've found a magic sword, which I can use to basically stun the goon for like 10 seconds. Um, I eventually get tired of it, and I'm like, I'm just going to go see if there's anything I can do outside of the castle, because I can't, like... The cauldron's not there. He's not doing anything. He just sits in his throne room saying that they have to find the cauldron. So I'm thinking something else has to happen. So I ventured outside, but I took... You can see the path splits. And I took the other side and tried to scale down, and I couldn't figure it out. Now this is another thing that is... See, now it says I'm starving. Um, this is another thing that is difficult. Like, if you're a kid, like, there's the drawbridge is up. Okay. So what do you do? You know, there's nothing here that looks like it would work. Like I tried flying dust that says, nah, it's not gonna work. You try the magic word, doesn't do anything. And nothing. So this is one of those things that Sierra would often do where it was either randomly generated or timed. So for example, in King's Quest three, which I just played, or I should say I just replayed there's the eagle feather, which I notoriously complain about. Like, you'll see the eagle fly by, and you have to wait for his feather to show up. And you'll just keep seeing him fly by, and you're being timed in King's Quest Three, just waiting for this feather to drop. Um, and you can see here, once again, like I've restored, come back up, and there's no way to open up this drawbridge. So you go up to the next screen, you can see that window, which is kind of cool, but it's all blocked off. There's nowhere to go. So just trying different things like, oh, I couldn't fly from the drawbridge, so maybe I fly up here. So we got to try that. And no, fairy dust just rushes out from between your fingers telling you, no, this isn't where you're supposed to fly. And still I come down the screen, still drawbridge is up. So I'm going to have some food and water. And if you go all the way to the right, you can't go down. So if you go all the way to the right, so the next screen is the moats. And you can see that furthest to the right, it's it's blocked off. So is the way across <laughs> the moat, which seems insanely dangerous because there are four crocodiles or alligators. But if you can outswim them, guess what? I managed to do it first try, and I got points for it. But now the guys are dropping things on you, and you can't climb on the silver things, which you'll see. So start scaling the wall. Things are going well. And I'm going to hit something like, are you serious? <laughs> so not only are you scaling, but you can't see these things dropping down. And this is where you find out. You can't touch the silver stuff. And not only do you not just fall straight down, but you actually fall into the moat. Now, you can survive falling into the moat. Um, I think it happens to me once where I fall into the moat and there is no alligators next to me. Um, now, see this here. You can see this window. It looks like, oh, I just need to climb in. Uh, but I can't. So what I end up doing is scaling down a little bit and just start hitting F6. And it says, since you remove the vines, you can climb in. Uh, I keep pressing F6 thinking, okay, get hit by a rock. So now I'm thinking, okay, this is the way in. I just need to basically move the vines and I can get in. Uh, here's a small spoiler alert. <laughs> If you know how to climb in that window after pressing F6, please leave a comment because I could not figure it out. So you've removed the vines. So how do I get in the window? I'm trying to move up and down. I'm hitting F6. 
all it does is tell me that I've removed the vines, but it doesn't let me get inside. And I've tried using an object that does do it. Try climbing all the way to the top, the side could not get in this window. So I have no idea how that's done or where that window even leads because I can never get into it. Every time you hit F6, it just says, well, since you've moved the vines, you can climb in the window, but no idea how to do it. I have zero clue. And what's interesting is once you get to the window, it, I feel like it stops. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and descend, go all the way down. I touched the rock and see, fell in the moat. There were no alligators. So I actually made it. And then taking my life in my own hands, tried to swim back <laughs> unsuccessfully. Uh, so those gators will get you. <laughs> so now realizing I can't climb up that window, I'm like, all right. So clearly it has to, what? Now there's a guy here who clearly cannot see me. I just walk right up and I'm just going to jump in the cart, I assume. And it says gathering of courage. You leap into the cart and he you inside. So the henchman leaves, and then uh, <laughs> that seems so much easier. Like, I am not sure what triggers that cart. Do you have to swim across for that cart to appear? Like, what's the deal? And so now I'm in here trying to, like, look around. Now, when I saw these barrels, I automatically assumed, like, these barrels are... And then the henchman shows up. And if he takes you, like I said, the first time you'll see me wander around, but it talks about how it takes your things. And so what I end up doing is grabbing that silver cup and you get points for it. And then you just go bang it on the door. And, but the guards don't come. So just bang it on the door and that gets the attention of someone down below. So it talks about rattling the cups, rattle against the door. Nothing happens. But you can see the points went up, so it's you can tell something has happened. And then the little passage opens. And a beautiful young girl appears. Says, What's all the noise up here? And then you go down there and fall. So she can somehow magically lift her head up, uh, but you can't. And she literally sticks <laughs> sticks to you like glue down here. So now figure out what we're going to do. So first we're going to open up these coffins, see if there's anything in there. Nope, can't do anything with the coffin. Now there's a ladder that leads right up to a wall. So automatically you're probably guess you need to do something with the gargoyle. See, now you hit your head. So if you go up to the gargoyle, hit F6, it'll move it, and sure enough, it opens up a passage, but apparently I can't climb a very small ladder. And she says, hey, good luck. I'm going to stay hiding down here. And you're like, cool. And the goon guy shows up again. And he just stays there, and you can see the keys on the wall, so you know you have to get the keys, but how do you get the keys? Well, if you're here and you don't have the sword yet, <laughs> it's really, really difficult because the goon will keep chasing you no matter where you go. So you try the torch, just trying to grab anything. There's the closet. So I didn't get a chance to look in the closet because the goon showed up. And he shows up very quickly. And here's the mad chef. Like, I can't figure out what his deal is before the goon captures me couldn't figure out what to do in that kitchen or anything. And now the tin cup is gone. So it seems like you're stuck, but actually the door will automatically open and you'll fall back down. So you don't need the tin cup after you've opened it the first time. So we're gonna make our way around. We're gonna see if there's more to this place. Now see, this looks like a hallway here with, with bricks in it. So I tried to see if this was like a handle or push some bricks in or something like weird. And then you go up here 
And this also kind of looks like a area for bricks pushing, more coffins, which is very ominous. But clearly like all blocked off and there's some bricks there. And then over here, you see just a bunch of skulls. Now, spoiler alert, this girl has stayed hidden in this spot because uh, she's safe here. Now, that room that we were just in, spoiler alert, that's where the Horn King does his thing with the Black Cauldron once he gets it. So, turns out this whole little safe area for this girl is not safe at all. And what I also discovered is the goon, when you walk up to that screen, he's always on the far right side. So, if you walk up that screen, go to the far left side, and you can exit through that door quickly. But if you don't have the sword, it's kind of pointless because you still need to get the keys. Which, in hindsight, technically, you don't have to as far as I know. It might do something to the end of the game. But there is the reason you need those keys is it obviously opens a door and unlocks someone else who is trapped. And let's see, now I'm just pressing F6 everywhere to see if there's anything like a hidden passage. Um... Uh, there's a guy who's trapped, and he's basically the bard who's been held there for a very long time, and he gives you a harp. You never have to use that harp for anything, and so it's not like you need to save him. I don't know what happens if you don't save him. Uh, I got the keys eventually, because here in this burial chamber is the king who once built this great castle and he was a great and wise leader it says and the bobble finds a thing for the girl and she's like hey i'm out have a good time uh gr good luck with your quest and she bails on you so all she does is pretty much trail you she gives you no real information and then she just bails so i'm pretty sure she's just in there to say hey here's some characters that will be familiar to you when you watch the movie so get the magic sword and the first thing you should do when you get the magic sword is hit F3, select it, and then just be ready to hit that function 4. Because when you do, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be kind of violent for a Disney-esque game where you're swinging a sword at a goon and, like, killing him. But that's not what you do. You just render him unconscious for, like, 10 seconds. Now, the smart thing to, to <laughs> have done is to now I should have rendered him on uh, rendered him slow or unconscious whatever you want to call it and then done the key thing because he turns out to be right there and you get captured and he takes everything again so then you have to make your way back to the closet so I ended up just restoring and seeing if I could just swing the sword knock him loose and then <laughs> try to use the keys get in here everything's good Go up in here, free him, press F6, he's free. So he's a storyteller, the minstrel, I don't know how to pronounce his name. And I died, because I had no food. Because I was taken to the prison, and I never actually got food. So I restored all the way back to when I first entered the castle. Now the goon hasn't showed up, so I'm trying to find a secret passage or something like that. Um, and the goon is there now, so now I'm trying to see if I can time it where I can get out of there and either go south or north from here. Uh, but it uh, turns out it's not going to happen. And what I was also waiting for was to see if the goon eventually leaves. Um, what's interesting is there is an area upstairs where... Didn't make it. <laughs> uh, there's an area upstairs where you walk behind a tapestry. And it doesn't even look like it's a tapestry that's in front of anything. It looks like it's a tapestry on the wall. So when I walked behind it, 
I was surprised, and I just waited. I was like, okay, I wonder if the goon can see me. And so it turns out there's actually a secret passage over there. Um, but the goon, when he comes out, he doesn't see me and he leaves. So that's literally what I was trying to do here at the barrels. I was like, I wonder if he doesn't see you after a while, if he just leaves. And from what I can tell, he never does. So that's where I was talking about. I thought the barrel was a passage. Then we're going to restore back because I quit to probably go get food. So now we're going to make our way back. We've actually found the passage without getting captured so far. So now we can get the sword, we'll have our food, we'll have our drink, everything should be fine. Except for the fact that I haven't refilled my water. So, I can tell you what's going to happen eventually. I will, I think, I think there's a part, I can't remember if I included it, because I died a number of times in this castle, that I trimmed some of it out. Um, there is a part where I end up leaving, I end up running out of food, no, out of water. So I die from dehydration. And then the, later on, I'll try to get water, and I fill it near the near the moat and drink it. It kills you, as I suspected it would. <laughs> All right, so we're good with food and water right now. We take the sword. So now we have the sword. Now we have our food, we have our water, we have the sword. Everything should be good to go. So now we're going to do this, flip the old uh, gargoyle over, crack open that door, save, and have sword equal F4. <laughs> but I'll cancel that, because first I am going to select the sword, <laughs> and then save, so that way when I restore the sword is already selected, and I can just start swinging away if that goon shows up. Uh, once again, don't show up on the left side of the screen, or the right side of the screen. Go in on the right side, and that'll give you time. So now we get the keys. And the goon is already up, and I'm going to try to do the key thing, but because I'm hitting F4, it's already too late. So basically, stun the goon, get the keys, wait for him, and then stun him again. <laughs> This game was, once it got to the, overall, it was A, difficult, but it was also quite a bit of a pain. So, <laughs> and this is where I was trying to use F4, and you can see I accidentally hit F5. I talked about that earlier, where I wish they would have made the function keys just right next to each other versus in different areas uh, being spread out. So now I'm going to stun him again. This will give me time to switch over to the keys, and then use the keys. Free the uh, minstrel guy. Fluter, I guess, would be the pronunciation of his name. He talks about how the Horn King has had him trapped for a long time, gives you a harp. Which, like I said, I never used the harp. But... In the end, somehow still got 230 out of 230. So, we select the sword again and make our way through. Surprise, the goon is not there. So, made me think for that brief moment, hey, maybe the goon doesn't show up anymore. So, and then, sure enough, there he is. <laughs> So I actually waited to see if he could actually climb the stairs, and I also waited to see if he would leave, but I imagine since he can technically probably quote-unquote see me, even though he saw me literally climb into the wagon, like why is he so angry now? How did he not see me climb into the wagon originally? Anyway, so I waited to see if he would eventually leave, and he doesn't. So now we are upstairs. see what's downstairs that's the closet and there's the goon and then there's the crazy chef there's the goon hit him and he falls 
going to go see what's over here. Okay, it's the throne room. Just need to outrace him to the stairs. It's an intense moment, and apparently he doesn't show up here, or if he does, it takes a while. So we're going to head upstairs to the very top and see what's up there, since can't really seem to do much down here. And then get stuck on the stairs. So there's the goon. There's the thing, that's the tapestry. So it looks like it's on the wall, but you can actually walk behind it. And there's the goon again. And then this is the throne room. So this is where I thought everything was going to go down. Like, seems like the most logical place for everything to go down. And this would have been a great spot to say why they needed Henwin so much. But uh, no, they just sit there in silence and I wait, go back out, end up being chased by the goon again. <laughs> that goon was painful. So painful. By far the worst thing in the game. He's like the dwarf from King's Quest who steals your stuff. But he shows up on every screen <laughs> in this castle. It doesn't matter. And see, he'll just show up there and then make it really difficult to get down the stairs. And you can swing and miss. <laughs> so now we're going to run. <laughs> oh, and then walked right into him. So stuff like that, I think, is such BS that it's he's right outside the door. So you don't even have an opportunity to really do anything unless you have saved before and then you can restore and swing at him you know start hitting f4 frantically as you're walking into that room so now i'm just wandering around because i can't figure out what to do i found the throne room he doesn't do anything in the throne room i've been to all the rooms downstairs so now at this point i'm like should i just leave but then the thing is closed and i'm like okay well, let's hit it with the sword. And sure enough, that actually works, and the goon does not chase you outside. So I think I even save it as, like, I'm tired of <laughs> I'm tired of the goon or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, this, this guy, so tired of him. Now, here's where I was talking about before, where we first walk up and we see the castle, and I'm standing on, on the right side of it. Now, notice, I am on the left side of the passage. So I saved it as, can I go back? So my plan was to go back, and since they don't have the Black Cauldron, it looks like, and I know they don't have Henwin, because they said as much, I need to go find where the Black Cauldron is and see what I can do or see if I need to talk to someone to basically trigger the, the, uh, the Black Cauldron thing. So now you can see there's no rope here, but I thought that tree... I could do something with the tree, and it, like maybe the rope's there, and I just don't see it. Because it's got the same layout, it's just flipped, and the colors are flipped. So the wall is light gray, and the path is dark gray, versus on the other side, you'll see it, that the wall is dark gray, and the path is light gray. So, don't think I didn't notice that out low, or whoever did the graphics. <laughs> So I'm still hopeful that I can get down from here, but clearly, spoiler alert, you can't. You have to be on the other side. And what's interesting is, watch. The thing, phew, made it. So that made me think, okay, well, clearly, somewhere around here, I have to do something. But I think that's actually a bug because... As I said, this is the same wall as the other side, but the colors are flipped. So that script of when you climb up the rope, that's where the tree is. And that's where you'd normally land and say, whew, we made it. So that was another indication that it just dawned on me. That's why it says that. Because the the palette is swapped, and but the code is still there to say, hey, when you're by this tree, that's where you put that flag that says, whew, we made it. Now you can't just walk to the other side. No, that'd be uh, that'd be too easy. You'd literally have to go all the way around. So, just being crazy and silly at this point. 
to see if I could actually scale down. <laughs> but you can't. It won't let you. See? So that's normally where the tree would be. There's nothing you can do there. You can't climb onto it. Nothing. Because it is a pallet swap. So I ended up quitting for a while. Coming back. Restore. And then I think, well, let's try the other side. Because it dawns on me that when I was standing by the castle when I first showed up, I am standing on the right side of that rock in the middle. So, as I said, make my way back. And you can't just cross over. No, you have to do this insane path back and then go on the other side and do the path back out. Now, I could have probably just restored to where I was probably somewhere right there, about where I said I was tired of the goon. Probably saved myself some time. Uh, but I'm apparently, like, a fanatic. So now, we can just cross on the right side. So you can see I saved it as came up this side. Is it different? And as I already said, it is indeed. So the throat is dry. Gotta drink some water. And now it says you're out of water. <laughs> so now life is about to get more complicated. Because now I need to get water. But like I said, water in this game is pretty easy to get. It's pretty much everywhere. Just don't do the moat. And see how it's a palette swap? The wall is dark, and then the paths are the lighter gray. And then there's the tree. So it's literally just a palette swap. And then reversed. Or not reverse, I should say mirror. Because the tree's on the other side and all that other stuff. But they just took out the rope and stuff like that. And get to the rope, F6. And then diagonal down. And then I ended up, uh, <laughs> you'll see it, I ended up stuck in this maze for a little bit. Because uh, I couldn't remember the exact pattern to come into it. And it seems pretty obvious, like, oh, yeah, no, just right here, right here. But it's not. You have to walk around, down. And then this seems like it. Nope, that's not it. Down, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> so I ended up, what I ended up doing is going all the way back up to the top and then refinding my way down and just doing it all over again. <laughs> so we know we go there. So far, we're good. Oh, is this it? And then down, and then around. Nope, can't seem to do it. I gotta imagine, like I said, if this was uh, <laughs> if this was for kids back then, this would be frustrating. Because uh, even I was frustrated. Like, it looks like I can move forward, but I can't, and then can't seem to get out. So I am definitely like curious about some of the thought that went into when they programmed this game. Because part of it that is crippling uh, when you do mazes like this is that you can only see from the point of view of looking at the screen like this versus what the character would actually see if it was more of a first person. You could see where path might end and dead end and stuff like that versus just trying to walk and hit stuff until you can find your way out. And then, magically, I find my way out. So. <laughs> out of water, by the way, the rock maze sucks. So the water has been filled. And see, once again, trying to use the water ended up hitting the save function. So 
So now to find where the black cauldron is. It says that it's a bog and unsafe. So first thing you got to do is save because who knows if that gray area is safe to walk on, but it apparently is. So we're going to cruise around. Now, when I saw this, I was like, do not tell me I have to jump from rock to rock to rock. Because I can see land right over there. So my first thought was, we need to find which rocks to jump on, and some of them are going to sink or whatever. Uh, I tried the flying dust, and you start flying, and it's like, no, I'm not going to let you over there. And it sets you back down. So that seems like it's not the thing to do. But if you go right here, you can see land again. And you would think, well, the flying dust didn't work last time when I saw a chunk of land. Let's try it again. And guess what? It works perfect. So there's this game is really picky as to where you can do stuff. I feel like if you would have done it on the other screen, you should have been able to land over here as well. My first thought is that chest is a trap. Just keep going. <laughs> I think I even call it, if this was D&D, &D, that would be a mimic. Yeah, that'd be a mimic if this was D&D. &D. So we go over here, and there is a multitude of cauldrons. So... Now let's go see what's in the chest, since we've already saved in this room. And a bunch of frogs come out. And then the three witches appear. And you learn that those frogs were once human guests. So uh, you freed them, but uh, they're still frogs. And you explain who you are. You're on a quest to recover the Black Cauldron. And... You basically explain that you were told that maybe the witches can help. And the witches explain that they don't give anything for free. They have to haggle. And either that or they'll turn you into a frog. So the most prized possession I have is the magic sword, which I think, oh, then I just get the black cauldron and everything will be fine. And they're like, sure, deal. So cool. I got the black cauldron. Everything will work out great now. Try to take it with you, now that you have the Black Cauldron. Oh, there's only one way to stop the evil power of the Black Cauldron. A living person has to be willing to sacrifice themselves. So that doesn't seem like a really great idea. And then there's the little dude from the Black Cauldron. Try to uh, <laughs> attack the Cauldron. I'm not even trying to attack it, I'm just trying to grab it. At, or jump in it to see if they'll take me, but nope. And I wrote, so that happened. So we're going to quit after that and restore. And I guess we're going back to the castle. But this time, without the magic sword to stun the goon. So that's going to make it way more complicated. And once I get back to the castle, <laughs> um, I perish. And Well, I wouldn't say perish. I keep getting thrown in the prison. A uh, number of times, and I'm literally just looking for how to find the Horned King with the cauldron, because I, like I said, I assume it'd be in his throne room. Like that seems a great area for a finale, right? To fight him in the throne room, and so I keep trying to make my way up to the throne room while dealing with the goon, <laughs> and what ends up happening is I get up to the throne room, and you're up on the uh, upper part. And I hit F6, and he jumps down, and then his assistant guy grabs me. You'll see it here uh, probably in a little bit. But turns out that's not where the finale is. Like I was saying earlier, it's actually in the hidden, quote-unquote, I'm doing air quotes over here, in the hidden cavern where that girl had been spending all this time hiding. <laughs> and uh, that's where that's where the end takes place. So now we've refilled the water bag, had some water, we've had some food, and now we're going back to the castle. So 
and once again doing the rock maze, which we've all talked about how great and fun that is. Getting up there is actually much easier. It's climbing back down to make your way through there that is way more difficult. And then back up diagonally. And here we are. So we're on the right side. There's the castle. Now the drawbridge should still be open uh, because I hit it with the sword, breaking the chain. So I would assume it's still open. And once I get there, you'll see that it is. Otherwise, um, I don't think the goon would be back out. So I don't even know if you can actually leave the castle <laughs> without going the route that I did. Um, but I will say that uh, I am insanely curious about how to get into the window that is over here by the moat, by this screen that's coming up. Because, um, like I said, I don't know where that window is in terms of the game, like the various screens that I went into. I don't know where that window leads. Because it looks like it's pretty high up, and I'm not sure where that room is. And it certainly seems to indicate that you can get in there, because it says once you've moved the vines, you can get in, but... Oh, uh, you know what? I wonder if it's indicating, I would have to relook at it, that once you move the vines, you can get in. And indicating that all those vines technically stay there, and you actually cannot get up there. I wonder if that's what that's indicating. Now that I think about it. <laughs> So I, maybe you actually cannot get into that window, despite how it seems to phrase itself. It's indicating once you move those vines. Hmm. All right, well, I may have already solved that mystery. If I'm right, and you know, please let me know in the comments for the uh, three people who might watch this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to cruise around. Now, technically, right there, if I'd gone right, we could have gone to the end of the game. Because I've got all my items. Uh, I don't really need anything else. Uh, so a good portion of the rest of this video is me wandering around aimlessly, trying to get to the Horned King in his throne room, believing that's where the final battle is going to take place. So once again, we enter in this chamber. This is where the former king was. It talks about how he was a rise ruler. Can't go out the same hole that the uh, beautiful blonde girl went through. So that's not an option. So once again, if I would have just gone right one more screen and then right one more, we would be at the end of the game. But now I'm going to spend some time... <laughs> Trying to dodge the goon, enter in the screen on the left because he's usually on the right, but he's not there, so everything's good. Maybe the goon's not here anymore. Let's head up the stairs. All right, looks like he's not showing up. Yeah, I mean, life looks good. So far, no goon. So we're just going to put wandering because we're not sure where to go next. And I think this is where, oh, it's the next flight of stairs, where I walk up the tapestry. I think this is where I jump. Talking about how that dude just jumps. Oh, there's the goon. So I have to go up the flight of stairs first to do the jump thing. So the goon is definitely still there because he was just in the throne room. Like I said, he's like the dwarf. Anywhere in this castle, he'll just show up. Oh, now my throat is dry. And that is kind of accurate because of how much talking I'm doing. From time to time, I don't know if you can hear me, I'm drinking some uh, Coke Zero. This video is not sponsored by Coke Zero, but Coke Zero is literally what gets me through the day. <laughs> and there's the goon. So we're just going to go ahead and turn around. 
try the other side of the screen. I don't know how this goon is getting around so quick. This is a pretty big dude. And he's getting around pretty fast. So if we go over here, we can see that's the northern screen of where the drawbridge was. So hang out near the top, because that's where the goon is. Gonna head down the stairs, no goon so far. Life's good in the stairwell area. Try to get back to his throne room again. And the goon is there again. Let's head up into the kitchen with the crazy chef guy. Can't do anything, and the goon catches you. And takes all your belongings, so we're going to restore back to the stairs. And see! I noticed immediately he did not go for me, and he immediately left when he couldn't see me. And that literally looks like a tapestry that's on the wall. Oh, so the Horn King, he shows up. Could this be the final moment? Could this be it? You leap from the balcony, and it looks like you land on the guy, but no. He just catches you, and he throws you into the prison. So now we're going to watch this unfold. Are they going to get the cauldron? Are they going to unleash all evil? Is this where the final battle is about to happen? And the guy just says, um, shouldn't we be doing stuff with the cauldron? And we wait. Oh, but the goon catches you. <laughs> so we restore. We leap down. Creeper sees you, and now he's chasing you. So now we got two people chasing us. Now that now the Horn King is gone, and now the goon is back. So now we're just running amok, trying to find out where we should go. We're going to do a quick exit down into this area. Bam. All right. So let's take a look. Go over here. The only place I haven't gone is in here. Oh, and there's the Horn King. <laughs> so now... What I know is the trick is the magic mirror. It's like the one item I've not used yet. And basically, it's very similar to the Medusa trick in uh, like King's Quest 3 and stuff like that. But you show the reflection of their evil and their all that stuff. And he sees how evil he is. And he sacrifices himself into the cauldron, which, uh, you know, it is what it is. You would think someone that evil wouldn't really care. Uh, but the force of the explosion caused it to explode. You grab onto a log. There's this whole cutscene where you're just going downstream. <laughs> going downstream. Just keep going downstream. Getting caught up in the current. Enjoying this. And there's the cauldron. <laughs> so you get out. Save the game. So how do I get to the cauldron? <laughs> So what I'm going to try to do, and the hags show up, or the, the witches. And they say it's not cracked up to be uh, such a hero. Uh, we want our cauldron back, so we're going to offer you some stuff. How about this shield that will protect you from mortal harm? You pass on it. Just don't do anything. They offer you armor that will protect you from all mortal weapons. Just don't do anything. And they say, fine, you drive a hard bargain. Here's your sword. And you take the sword, and they take the cauldron. And then that's the end. You watch them walk off into a beautiful sunset. Now, had you not rescued the, min the minstrel guy, would he be there? Or would he be dead, caught in the explosion? So, I wonder what happens if you don't save him. I am... I'm not curious enough to play the game again, but if anyone has played it and not saved him and knows what happens, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, this is the end. Black Cauldron brought to you by Allo, commentary by me. Please click like and subscribe, share, and all that stuff. I would love to get more people on this channel checking it out, and who knows, maybe one day make some money. All right, thanks. Have a good one.